Um, today I will show you our integration um, with um, Open Science, especially through using the ArcGIS bridge um, on a project that I know all of you are very familiar with, which is the Global Fishing Watch. Um, so this is basically the API for Global Fishing Watch, and these are records of transshipments. And the polygons here, are, as all of you know, are EEZs, um, Economic Exclusive Zones, Exclusive Economic Zones. And this work came out as an analysis piece and a journal paper that's been published. And the R code also was made available for this. And what I want to do here is how long it'll take me to take this project and um, create some data products using ArcGIS Pro and how to integrate this and maybe do some analysis with this data set so that this uh, amazing data set and this amazing analysis can be enriched with the spatial dimension and with uh, mapping and analysis capabilities of our platform. Before I go into it, the time it took me was about half an hour. So that makes me feel good about our integration. Um, so what I did here is uh, using our R integration, which is called the R ArcGIS bridge. And if you're wondering what this looks like, um, it's basically this package called ArcGIS Binding that we develop in-house that enables you to have seamless connection to geospatial data sources, whether they are remote, like feature services, image services, REST APIs, GeoJSONs, or if they're local to your machines, like shapefiles, rasters, mosaics, anything that lives inside of a geodatabase, this is a fully connected um, package that enables the seamless movement of data and analysis from one platform to the other. So without going into this code, and I'll be doing this demo live, um, so I'm just going to import all of my libraries. And the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to read this transshipment data that the Fishing Watch provides is an R data frame. And here, I, want like, I would like to highlight the first capability of the R ArcGIS bridge. And in case this is too small, I would like to zoom in here, call this ArcWrite function. With ArcWrite, you can have a spatial R data frame that you do your analysis with. And if you would like to further analyze this in ArcGIS Pro, I can simply run, run this function. And what this function is going to do is it's going to write this particular, um, I guess I should run all of it. It's going to run, it's going to write this data frame into a geodatabase or any uh, data location of my choosing. And the transshipment data that we just looked at in the web browser a minute ago is now in ArcGIS Pro using our ArcGIS bridge. And this opens up many analysis uh, possibilities for me. Again, my polygons for exclusive economic zones are drawn here. Um, one thing I would like to do now that I'm in the platform is use some of our spatial data, uh, spatial machine learning capabilities, such as just looking at spatial clusters of where this transshipment is happening. For those of us who are not familiar on the call about transshipments, this basically includes uh, transferring fish, uh, crew or, or fuel between ships to keep fishing ships running longer. But of course, this might be prone to illegal activity such as illegal workers or overfishing um, since this transaction, if this transaction is not monitored. And one thing you will see is a lot of these transactions are ac actually happening outside of exclusive economic zones where they may not be monitored by an authority. One thing I want to see about these transactions are spatial clusters, and we have a spatial clustering tool in the platform. I can delineate areas that have significantly dense transactions happening. And in terms of checking, in terms of monitoring and policymaking, this might be intelligible for me. Another interesting dimension of this data set that I found is the duration of, the, of this interaction between different ships. Um, so I just want to do what we call the hotspot analysis of durations. Basically, the reds indicating significantly high duration of interaction between ships compared to the global average, and cold spot meaning significantly short interactions. And here, one thing, a pattern that I kept on seeing is whenever these interactions are outside of exclusive economic zones, um, they are pretty quick. They happen pretty quickly. Um, I don't know if this indicates where this transaction needs to happen quickly so that uh, there won't be a lot of time to, uh, to be checked by an authority. Of course, there were some outliers, such as this location, that has a significantly high duration of uh, transshipment between ships that is outside exclusive economic zones. But again, using this analysis, I can actually create more data products very easily just using geoprocessing tools. 
Of course, the uses of our integration doesn't really end here. If I would like to make this a useful data product for someone, and already there are some useful data products such as these images that are, are informing people about uh, different types of transshipments that are happening in the oceans. One thing that we can do with the new capabilities of the ArcGIS bridge is actually create interactive mapping that is backed by our analysis and analysis in ArcGIS. So what I would like to do here is I would like to recreate this map as an interactive map. Um, one thing I want to do is I need my EEZs. And for that, um, as Sean mentioned, we have the living atlas that contains a variety of data sources that are live. So I have a feature service that contains EEZs. And here is a part of this EEZs for United States that I can see. And I'm looking at this through my web browser. This is live data, this, can, this is curated, and this can be updated. And with our new R-Bridge capabilities, I can actually directly read the REST API for this remote data source and consume it as an R data frame. So this is a significant capability, not only for visualization, but if you would like to do an analysis in R, if you already have pre-existing um, R libraries. And um, I was so amazed by the variety of everything that you do, I actually did take a look at your, uh, some of the R packages and R codes that you shared, it is amazing. So you can actually use our live data feeds in R just using this integration. But as I promised, I would like to create an interactive map using our leaflet integration. So I will use this remote polygons for EEZs, exclusive economic zones. And I will use the data that I just read into ArcGIS Pro and I will create this live map. And here, I will annotate this map in an interactive manner with respect to the vessel's median speed in knots. And I will annotate um, for the polygons, which are exclusive economic regions, which country it belongs to, which region it belongs to. So for my polygons that live in that feature service, I know that this is the ex exclusive economic zone for Alaska. And with these different points, which are uh, vessel data, I can, um, I can map vessels median speed. And here the possibilities are endless. If you would like to create actionable products that are live that users can interact with, this tool actually creates an HTML and this is what you're looking at in RStudio. You can use this HTML uh, to embed in a story map. You can uh, create a widget that serves this HTML uh, that is backed by your analysis in R. And if you would like to do an analysis in ArcGIS Pro, you have full connection to do that as well. So this is uh, our integration in a nutshell with using ArcGIS platform and R. Thank you, Aaron. That's great. Any questions? Okay. Why don't we finish? John, you want to sort of pick up and talk about the uh, IUU uh, mapping? Did uh, someone have a question? That sounded like someone was trying to yeah. get through with a question. Sorry, I missed it. I had a question, but can you guys hear me? Yes. Yes. Uh, yeah, I just wanted to ask about um, whether you can do some of that geospatial anal analytics you did in, in, in ArcGIS within R, kind of like the hotspot, cold spot analysis and others that you, that you showed. Um, yes, and that is, um, that was actually uh, another demo that I don't think we have time for right now, but um, all of our backend is in Python and with our integration with, we have a brand new integration with Reticulate 2 in R bridge. For example, these geoprocessing functions like empirical Bayesian Krieging, which is a Python function, I can actually call it an R. Um, actually, I just created this conservation workflow that uses MaxSense in R, that uses our geoprocessing tools to do data wrangling using ArcGIS Pro backend. So to answer your question, yes, uh, through our Reticulate integration, you can call Python libraries or you can call our own geoprocessing functions and keep your analysis in one place. Mm -hmm.